Hello fellow option traders, this is Jeff and this is the long anticipated video that I promised to make on the Google Triple Calendar that I opened back on March 8th in my paper money system and the uh, the reason for the calendar was, or for the triple calendar anyway, um, was to be able to capture the volatility collapse that's going to happen on the near month options. Now in the case of uh, this Google calendar, um, we opened a 555 put, a 605 put, and a 660 put, and they were, um, had April as the near month and May as the far month on each one of them. Now the, the uh, reason why you would do a calendar is to be able to take advantage of the more rapid decay that you get on the near month, in this case April option. You get uh, a time decay, but also when earnings are coming up, you also get a what uh, is typically typically called a volatility collapse. Now, um, normally when you do a calendar, you also want the ideal situation is where you have the far month, in this case May, implied volatility to be less than the near month, in this case April, which is in, shown here as being 28.7 versus 31.5 for the 555s. That's the reason why you want to do a calendar. Some people actually do calendars with the far month much further than what I'm showing here or what I did here. They might do even um, way out, um, they might do a leap, you know, into something in the next year, January of next year, or the following year. But the risk that you have there is that the stock price moves and, and you ideally want to be writing calendars typically monthly over and over again if uh, you're at the money or close to being at the money or near the money. But in this case, um, I did the triple calendar because I have no idea where Google is going to end up with uh, their price at their earnings or the day after their earnings. As it turned out, it didn't move very much. But when I originally put it on, what I was looking for were some nice peaks, which I have here for each one of the strikes, and valleys that still allow for some margin of profit. And we're looking at probably about maybe six or seven hundred dollars profit here. If you were, if the scale actually showed it over here, now you're not going to get that on a calendar, and the reason why you don't you don't achieve the values at these red lines at expiration is because of the bid ask. A calendar is typically priced at a midpoint, and when you get close to expiration, um, the markets get a lot pickier about midpoints. So you're not going to, it's just forecasting that it's going to be $600, but your chances actually of uh, making $600 are pretty slim from what I found. And I also found that exiting calendars are a lot easier if you buy back your short first and then you might want to wait, wait around and see what you want to do with your long strike if you want to write in this case you got May um, you could write weeklies against that May possibly uh, probably a subject for another video sometime in the future as a matter of fact I should make note of that alright so here's the calendar and what we're gonna do we're uh, in the on-demand application right now and we are sitting at 38 this is uh, these are the prices that I actually paid for it in my test system or in my paper money system I have them locked so they're not going to move and we're going to take a look at what happens to this as time moves on so what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to, what you normally do with on-demand, well, what you always do with on-demand, what do you mean normally, 
is um, you pick your date out. I have it paused right now. You can see that the uh, pause icon here is white. That means that, that it is actually paused. It also says it's paused right here. So I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead to March 23rd, which is my next date that I uh, have on my sample here. We'll click Go, and the system buffers it. And since I already brought these up previously, uh, the buffering is not taking very long. So I was going to pause the video, but I don't have to. So what I always do here whenever we change dates or jump ahead or anything like that is I click on the reset slices and I click on the reset parameters because for some reason it doesn't want to catch up on this risk profile. So we can see that actually on uh, March 23rd that we were profitable and that's not such a bad thing but not enough. We have a $219 profit. We could exit it right now. Um, exactly what prices we would get for everything, I don't know. But I usually sort of figure that 10 or 15% less than what it's actually telling you because you just can't get those prices when you try to get out of these. So um, let's jump ahead. The next date that I want to jump to is April 3rd. And I have these fixed because I have a little um, graph I want to show you later. And we'll click on Reset Slices and we'll click on Reset Parameters. And you can see that we're still a little profitable here. We had, uh, whoa, it just moved. Let me just click on this again. Okay, now we're actually down to 169. And why do you think that is? Well, I think it's because actually these. Um, the uh, implied volatility on the April options is increasing. Here we're at 39, 37, and 37. Whereas before, we were in the much below 35, sort of around 30. But on the other hand, the implied volatility on the maze is also increasing. Not at the same rate, but it still is increasing a little bit. Let's take a look at a chart. How's that? We'll take a look at a chart. You can see what I did on my chart here is the green box is my profit zone based on the break evens on the triple calendar. So when I entered it back here, let me uh, turn my drawing tool on because I'm kind of digging this thing. When I entered it back here, you can see that uh, we were pretty much right in the middle of this huge area, this huge profit zone. That was another attraction for this particular uh, trade. And right now we are at 4.3. And that's what it says here. It says that April 3rd, we're a little bit... Um, Moved up a little bit to the high end, but we're still kind of okay. Next time that we look at this, we're going to look actually at, let's go to the day before earnings. Now, Google announced their earnings after the close on the 12th. So, uh, next time we look at this will be the day after earnings. Now look at what we have here for this this situation. We have um, the uh, May options up a little bit, but not too much. But look at these April options. Look at that IV. Did it go up like 20? It went up 20% or 20 percentage points, I should say, uh, over what it was, which is a darn near uh, like an 80 or 90 percent increase actually on the volatility itself. I'll we'll take a look at the our profit and loss here. We're sitting at thirty dollars and fifty two cents. Uh, just make sure that everything is kosher there. 
and just reset these make sure everything's good okay we're still still showing 30 let's go look at the chart you can see that uh, this happens frequently at earnings where um, there's not a lot of volume well this is 10 o'clock in the morning too uh, and prices doesn't move very much just because everybody's like lining up and placing their bets that's what's fun about earnings all right so let's do the fun part now and let's go to 413 which is the day after earnings and we'll reset our slices and reset parameters now well, there's a couple things that well you probably it just jumped right out at you because of what we're looking at look at these May or the April options drop 10 percentage points on that particular put and why do you think that that put didn't go down as much as the 605 or the 660 why do you think that is well, I, I'm, there's probably reasons for it, and I'm no Greek expert or anything like that. But what I think, what I've noticed is that puts generally have a higher IV, especially when the stock is declining. And is the stock declining? Well, let's let's take a look here. Well, yeah, kind of like uh, it opened up way up on the day, and then had a huge pullback. Opened at 6:53, and by 10 o'clock in the morning, that is when we are. What time we are here, right? Oops, don't want to do that. Yeah, 10:20 in the morning, it had already dropped quite a bit, and it actually dropped further that day. So my guess is that the reason why the IV hasn't come out as much out of that 6:05 um, is, or that five. Uh, what am I talking about here? The 555 is because the stock price is pulling back. All right, so um, we're looking at this now, and we see that we are at a 357 or 377 dollars in profit. Well, that's not bad. That's not bad. But I still would like to see more of this IV sucked out of these. Uh, a little bit so let's see what happens if we we could bail here and I in my uh, paper trading system I did actually bail here but the better thing to do is to wait a little while and bail later and I'll tell you why I think that that's a good idea the next date we are going to go to is 418 which is um, if you notice here that's two days before expiration and what usually happens on Thursday or Friday for the next month options there's some premium taken out uh, simply because they are going to turn into the near month options and therefore um, the time premium is not I mean there's they just take some extra out on Friday probably because a lot of people like to jump in on them on Friday so if you want to actually do the best for the next month options to get the best price if you're shorting them is to enter the Wednesday or the Thursday before weeklies I don't know if it matters that much on weeklies I haven't really studied those that much but I have noticed it definitely on the monthlies so we'll go to the 18th of April and um, sort of cheating a little bit on this because the price of Google is almost exactly at that 605 calendar but you'll also notice that um, make a little bit extra money if you do it that way all the way up to five hundred and twenty five dollars so using like my ten percent rule you should be able to make four fifty four seventy five out of this if you had closed it at this time on this day all right now um, one other thing I wanted to show you is a graph that I made of the IV on those same days that we just reviewed 
and uh, you can see when we started out here everything was pretty much grouped together here for each one of the strikes for both the April and the May and as time marched on they started to get a little bit further apart and the day before earnings they were very far apart this is what I mentioned the day after earnings about the difference between this 555 and everything else everything else had just really come down to earth here but that 555 and I think it's because the price was heading down and um, Puts that are out of the money have a higher IV than the, than the same amount of strikes out of the money for the call side, just normally. Um, that's why I think. Also, wanted you to note here that the total risk on this trade was nine hundred and eighty-five dollars. That's how much it cost me to enter these. They were long uh, calendar trades. But this chart here really tells the story on IV. So I got to thinking, what if, just what if, I bought on 411? I mean, if you think about it, you would, uh, since you're shorting the Aprils and the IV is so high that uh, you would get a really nice price for them. You know, maybe it'd be a lot cheaper to enter these because the um the long maze also would be a little bit cheaper because some of the time premium is out of them so considering that the aprils are worth more because of higher iv and the maze uh are, would cost you less to buy because of less time premium you would think that that would work out and uh but you know, you also have to consider that there's some time premium that's been taken out of the Aprils, too. So let's see. I have this set up over here. Let's see what what would happen on this particular day. I have them set up. Uh, I went in, and I actually went in on um, 411. And these are the prices that are listed down here. Let me just... Uh, highlight those for you it's this one these three right here these are the ones I'm going to turn these on turn the other ones off and we'll see how it looks on this date with the 60640 now I want to tell you that it would the amount of risk on this on these calendars is $1,015 versus the 985 for the uh, for the other one buying it back in March so there's not a lot of difference in risk uh, I thought it would be cheaper but since it's not cheaper will we make more money I don't know let's find out so we uncheck these and let's go in and we will check these and then make sure that we reset our parameters and reset slices and everything else. And actually, you paid a little bit more for it, right? Remember, um, I said that it would actually cost you $1,015. And you make a little bit less. So it was worth it to enter it early. Yeah, you had to live with the risk for like another six weeks than you would if you had entered here. So it's all a matter of your tolerance for risk and the length that you're going to be holding that risk. Well, I think I pretty much covered what I wanted to cover. Oh, let's just go jump over here and take a look at the chart. The green boxed in area, again, is our profit zone or the area between the break evens on the triple calendar. And we ended up just about exactly where we were when we started out. Uh, pure luck that's all it is just pure luck but either way though even if the price had ended up down at the 555 area or at the 660 area or practically anywhere in between it still would have been you know a couple hundred bucks at least uh, for a profit 
So that's it for the triple calendar on Google's earnings. It's an interesting trade. It's something you might want to consider, but please make sure you test it out first. Um, I did a couple of uh, double calendars for some earnings. This most recent earnings season, um, some of them worked out and some of them didn't. Some of them, <laughs> the stock moved way past any, any of my break even, and that can cost you some money. And that's why I entered this one early, too, is to be able to have the very wide break-evens on this trade. But that's it. This is Jeff, the Option Guru, signing off. Thanks for watching. Happy trading.